Hey everybody, this is Travis Elliott and welcome to Yin Yoga, Yin and Tonic. This beautiful Yin practice is from a program I created with my wife, Lauren, called Yoga 45 for 45, where you practice 45 minutes a day for 45 days. It's a combination of Vinyasa Power Yoga, Yin, restorative, gentle, mobility, core, and as well, Pranayama and meditation. If you're interested in getting full access to this program, it's available on Inner Dimension TV where you can get also access to all of my programs, series, and classes. For those of you that are yin yoga lovers, I also recommend on Inner Dimension TV checking out Flexibility and Beyond, an eight-week yin yoga program, and yin yoga Sleep Well where you practice 30 minutes right before bedtime as a way to downshift the nervous system. I'll drop a link down below where you can start your 10 day free trial if you're interested. Also remember to hit that subscribe button. And now I invite you to indulge in a little bit of yin and tonic. Welcome to yin yoga. I hope that you find this practice to be incredibly blissful, delicious, and sweet. Let's begin in a comfortable cross-legged seated position sitting on top of a block as we set the tone by doing a yin style version of alternate nostril breathing, where we'll breathe in through the left nostril and then we'll breathe out through the right nostril and then we'll repeat that. So go ahead and get comfortable in your seat. Sit up tall, feel expansive through your chest, your heart and your lungs. Take a deep inhale through the nose, fill the lungs up with breath and then out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Bring your right thumb to your right nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril for one, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath. As you're holding, you'll seal the left nostril with your right ring finger. And then now breathe out the right nostril for five, four, three, two, one. Seal the right nostril, right thumb. Breathe in through the left nostril for one, two, three, four, five, pause. Seal the left nostril, open up the right, and then breathe out the right for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, left nostril, one, two, three, four, five. Out the right nostril, five, Four, three, two, one. Inhale left for one, two, three, four, five. Out the right, exhale five, four, three, two, one. A few more rounds. Inhale left for one, two, three, four, five out the right exhale five four three two one inhale left for one two three four five out the right exhale five four three two one last cycle inhale left for one two three four five out the right exhale five four three two one release the right hand down in your lap take a big inhale through both nostrils side out the mouth exhale let it go the eyes closed, the awareness inward inside as you observe the after effects of what you just did, increasing the yin energy within the body and decreasing the yang energy, setting that tone for that peaceful, quiet yin yoga vibe.
Beautiful. From here, maintaining that connection of inner stillness and inner quiet, slowly open up the eyes. Slide your block off to the side. And then from here, we'll come into seated diamond. So begin to position your lower body so that it's shaped like a diamond. Toes forward, soles, bottoms of the feet connect. And then you grab those inner ankles with the hands. Take an inhale, draw the spine up and out. And then on the exhale, just begin to draw your forehead down towards your feet. Some of you might grab your block here and put the block on top of the feet and then rest the forehead on top of the block if that feels, feels supportive and comfortable for you to support the weight of your head and your neck. So those of you that maybe are new to this yin yoga style of practice, which is the perfect complement and the perfect balance to all the power yoga practices that we've been moving through within our power yoga program. And then in this kind of a practice, it's more about quality than it is about quantity. Holding these postures and these shapes somewhere between about three, four, and five minutes as a way to begin to move underneath the superficial armor musculature of the body and to begin to access the deeper connective tissue, the deeper fascia, and even down into the tendons, the ligaments, the bones, and the very joints themselves. So although it may not look like a whole lot is happening from the outside, a tremendous amount is happening internally inside. And in many ways, it also feels like a very deep and contemplative meditation. So at the same time, you're moving deeper into the terrain of the body. You're also moving deep into the ocean of your own mind or what we like to call the zone of the unknown. The domain that exists beneath the fluctuation of thoughts and emotions and physical sensation. And that reconnection to that power of stillness that's always there, but so often we become disconnected from it. Take those last few breaths there. Come here nice and slowly, no rush at all. Begin to make that transition, slipping out of the pose, coming up. And then from here, crossing the right shin in front of your left shin, roll over onto your knees. 
Keep the knees forward in position towards the top of the mat and then open the knees towards the outer edges of the mat as you bring your big toes together. And then you'll begin to sit back onto the heels, almost like a, a Japanese samurai warrior stance. And if this is really intense for your knees, you can always grab your block and you can slide the block underneath the hips. Otherwise, you're sitting back onto the heels, setting up for what we call saddle pose. Some of you, if your knees and your thighs and your lower body feel more open, you might feel inspired to begin to lean back onto the hands. See how that feels. If that's enough, you stay there. Some of you may want more and you could come back onto the elbows or the forearms. Some people may even come all the way back onto a bolster. If you have a pillow or two, you can lean back on that or recline all the way onto your back. And this gets into that deep fascia of the thighs, the hip flexors. It's also a really, really good stretch for the tops of the feet and the ankles. And I find a good compliment for people that are, are athletic in other ways, especially runners. And you allow yourself to just slowly and gradually move through those three phases of the yin yoga. The first phase is finding the edge, the boundary of resistance. And very important that as you find that boundary, that wall of resistance, that you never have the agenda that you have to push your way through it. Instead of pushing, you gently yield to it. That the very act of pushing or meeting something with aggression is an imbalanced state of yang, the very thing that we're trying to counterbalance. There was once a student that went to a Zen master and said that he wanted to become enlightened and he asked the master how long it would take. The master said, typically it takes about seven years of dedicated practice, hours a day, and the student said, well, what if I practice twice as hard as everybody else? And then the master said, well, now it'll take you 14 years. And the student began to argue with the master and he said, well, I thought you said it would only take seven years. And then the master said, well, now it'll take 21 years for you. So that concept of having an agenda, of needing to force, of needing to push through things, is the very thing that begins to backfire. So the more you let go, the deeper you go, and the deeper you understand and the more that becomes possible because you're moving beyond the limitations of your ego, which stands for edging goodness out. And then the second phase of that yin yoga pose is to find stillness, stillness in the body, stillness in the mind, which according to the ancient yogis is the very definition of yoga. Yoga chitta vritti narodha. Yoga is the removal of the fluctuations of the mind. And that last third phase is to just surrender to time. Knowing that when you get into that magical window of three to five minutes, the medicine 
hyaluronic acid, the collagen, the elastin, the fibroblast, all these amazing things go to make your connective tissues and your fascial matrix more supple, more durable, and more resilient. Nice and slowly begin to position yourself all the way back up again, taking the time that you need. As you come up, come onto all fours, tabletop position. Slide the knees back behind the hips like a modified plank. Take an inhale there. And then on the exhale, lower slowly all the way down onto your belly, onto the ground. This next one feels really, really amazing. It's called the fallen tree. So you're gonna take your right knee and you're gonna bend it and bring it forward until your right knee is in alignment with your right hip. So your right leg kind of looks like a frog leg on some level. And then you'll stack both hands on top of each other. You'll turn your gaze, your head to face the right. So same direction as your bent knee. And then you can rest the left side of your face on top of that pillow of your hands. And at the same time, you give that inner right hip and groin just a nice relaxing stretch. can allow the natural force of gravity to melt your whole entire physical body down into the ground below you, there to support you and there to hold you. Good. From here, start to lift the head back up. Extend the right leg back behind you. Before we come into the same thing on the other side, Sphinx pose. So elbows right underneath the shoulders. Forearms parallel to each other like railroad tracks. Toes extend back. And this next suggestion is very subtle, but see if you can take the skin of your forearms and pull that back a little bit. And then at the same time, pull your heart forward a little bit. 
And then you might allow the chin to dip down a little bit, which is not only beneficial for relaxing the neck, but also invokes the energy and the quality of humility. In the old Taoist text, it talks about being the valley of the universe. We don't always have to strive to be the mountain, the highest point, the biggest thing around. Very often we can feel the power of what Gandhi used to call coming back to zero. And again, what becomes zero is the ego or the identity. The heart of soul of all of yoga, we begin to access that place beyond time, place, and space, and beyond every label that we've ever been given, our name, our gender, our ethnicity, our nationality, job, occupation. to remember that these labels aren't the things that really define who we are. That who we truly are is boundless, is infinite, eternal, and incredibly sacred. feel like you want some more medicine of this backward bend, seal pose is there for you. Open the hands out a little bit wider and then you press down into those hands, drawing your chest, drawing your heart up like a soft upward dog. Take the shoulders, draw those down so your neck is long and relaxed. We take a last minute or so here. Last inhale, seal pose. And as you exhale, gently return the elbows back down to the ground. Flare the elbows wide. Stack the hands on top. Fallen tree on the other side. So now bring the left knee forward. Left knee in alignment with the left hip. Turn the gaze over towards the left and relax your right temple right on top of the pillow of your hands. Take a scan through the whole terrain of the body from the top of the head all the way down through the feet and the toes. And just notice right now there's not a place in your body where you're holding or gripping. Even some of those stubborn unconscious places where we, we typically grip, which is a manifestation of stress and anxiety. Feel that mind-body connection, the body softening, at the same time the mind and the heart soften.
Beautiful, you guys. From here, start to slowly ease out, lifting the head, extending the left leg back behind you, sliding the hands back by the ribs, pushing up gently towards that modified plank. Crawl the knees forward about halfway up your yoga mat. Take your left leg and bring it in front of your right leg, getting your legs nice and snug. And then from here, you'll sit back either onto a yoga block or you can sit all the way down onto the floor for shoelace pose. So if you feel really tight in those hips, definitely use a block. Hands come to the inner arches of the feet, sit up nice and tall on the inhale. And then on the exhale, begin to fold over and down. So that old Chinese proverb that says, patience is a bitter plant, but its fruit is so sweet. So in a posture like this, some of you may be feeling the bitterness as you experience incredible tension and atrophy within this, this range of movement in your body. When the body doesn't get taken care of and it doesn't get touched and we don't have oxygenated blood moving through different areas, it begins to atrophy, deteriorate and decay. And anything that deteriorates and comes into a state of decay, the acceleration of the dying process ensues. And therefore it makes sense when we slow that down or even reverse it, then the opposite is true. We extend life and longevity by touching and taking care of things. So initially a posture may feel incredibly bitter, but as you hold it and blood starts to circulate through, the bitterness begins to transform into sweetness. So with patience, with persistence, keep showing up and having the courage to be with what is. Slowly start to ease your way back up. Start to rotate your upper body to the right. We did this in one of our other power yoga practices. You're just gonna rotate all the way around. Full 360 degrees. Until you're facing forward with your right leg over top your left leg. So now you're on the other side, right leg over top left. And hands rest at the inner arches of the feet. Inhale, sit up tall. 
And then on the exhale, just begin to hinge over and down until your hips and your knees say, hey, that's enough. There was once a young boy who always daydreamed of being other places than where he was. When he was in the classroom, he daydreamed of being on the playground. And when he was on the playground, he dreamed of being on vacation. And when he dreamed of being on vacation, he dreamed of being somewhere else vacationing. And one afternoon, this boy took a walk through the forest and fell asleep. And after many minutes had passed, he was awoken by a voice calling his name. And when he opened his eyes, he was startled to see an old woman standing above him that almost looked like a witch, holding what looked to be a magic ball with a piece of gold and thread dangling from it. And when he inquired what that was, she explained, anytime you want to jump ahead within your life, you just pull the string. And in seconds, days will pass, but when you pull it stronger and harder, many years will pass in the matter of minutes. The harder you pull on it, the more you propel into the future. He begged her to have the ball. She obliged. The next day, the boy was in class, bored out of his mind. So he pulled on the string a little bit, and then he found himself playing outside of his house. Tired of being a young boy, he pulled on the string even more, and now he was a teenager going on his first date with a young girl named Elise. Still not satisfied, he pulled on the string and he became a middle-aged man, married to Elise, three kids. Still not satisfied, he pulled on the string once again. And now he was a 90-year-old man. Sadly, Elise had passed away, his mother was long gone, and all the kids were moved out of the house. And for the first time his entire life, he began to weep. He had never cherished those moments of the sunsets, holding his beloved's hand, playing and laughing with his kids. In the blink of an eye, it was all gone. So the old man proceeded back to the very forest that he used to explore as a young boy, fell asleep once again. When he awoke, the same old woman was standing above him, and immediately he begged her to give him his life back. Fortunately, she did. And there he was, back in that classroom, with a whole new perspective on life. And from that day forth, he cherished and relished each and every moment, even the mundane and the boring. Unfortunately, for many of us as adults, we don't get all of that back. But from this moment, from this day, we can truly, truly cherish the blessings that exist every single second of our existence because it will be gone in the blink of an eye. It's so ephemeral. Go ahead and ease your way all the way back up. From here, extend your legs out in front of you and then rotate your body to face the left setting up for drag and fly. So the left leg opens out, the right leg opens out. So you're in that seated, seated straddle stretch. And then from here, begin to fold over and down between your inner legs like Hannah's doing. You might grab a block to go either underneath the forearms, the elbows, or underneath the forehead, whatever feels right. 
See Michelle over here using a block to go underneath the hips to help her elevate up. So as always, using those props in a way that is useful, in a way that is helpful. For a lot of us, this can feel like an intense pose. But just trust that there is teaching in every pose and there is teaching in every single moment. Whatever's there, you don't have to push it away or resist it. But just let go, let be, and yield to whatever arises. Because whatever arises is probably arising for a very good reason. Which is why we ask the question, especially in challenging situations, why is this happening for me as opposed to why is this happening to me? When I ask the question, why is this happening to me? It puts me into victim consciousness. Whereas when I ask that question, why is this happening for me? puts me into a growth mindset or what we might call empowered consciousness. Last few breaths there. Beautiful, you guys. Slowly begin to exit out. Bring both legs forward towards the top of the mat to connect and touch. Slowly recline down onto your back. As you get onto the back, draw your right knee, right thigh into the belly. Extend the right arm out to the right. Take the right knee over to the left and to a twist. Option to stay there or cat pulling its tail is also available. You would bend your left foot in towards your left hip. The right hand would reach down and gently grab that left foot. And the right shoulder blade draws down into the floor. And you stretch the tissue around the spine, tissue in that left thigh, and the tissue between the inner right chest and right shoulder. Suppleness and mobility and flexibility is like the fountain of youth. 
take care of this body so that it takes care of us. If you have the tail or that left foot, extend that left leg back out towards straight, right knee all the way back up. Extend the right leg forward, draw the left knee in, extend the left arm out to the left. And so effortlessly allow the left knee to drape over to the right. Maybe bending the right foot in and reaching down with the left hand and grabbing that. Continuing to move deeper into that bottomless sea of inner serenity. Release the right foot, right leg. Bring the left knee all the way back up. Curl the knees into the belly. Take an inhale, draw the forehead up, tap the knees. And then corpse pose, shavasana, release. All the way down onto your back, onto the ground. Allow the arms, allow the legs to radiate out as you take up full real estate around the body. Last few minutes. Shavasana.
nice and easily. Begin to bring your awareness back into the space. Back onto your yoga mat. Back into your body. Reach the arms all the way up over your head towards the back of the space. Interlace the fingers, turn those palms inside out. Give that whole body a nice, good stretch. And then reach the hands forward, grab the knees, the shins, draw those in. And then gently rock and roll your way all the way up to a last final comfortable seat. Both hands up to prayer position. Eyes close. Giving gratitude to this practice for bringing you back to the power of deep, deep stillness. Be consistent, be inspired, be the change. Namaste. All right, everybody, thank you for your practice. I hope you enjoyed Yin and Tonic from the Yoga 45 for 45 program available in its entirety on Inner Dementia TV. Drop me a comment down below and let me know how your practice was. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested and you want more, come join us at Inner Dimension TV. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.